our, our final speaker for the first half uh, is a veteran of the Ignite kind of format. Um, Mary did the very first one we, we had in 2014 and has come back, I think, every year and done one at NCTM as well. Uh, um, so Mary uh, sent us this picture, and it's a picture of her at her second home, which is uh, she pretty much lives at the dojo where all four of her kids do jujitsu. Uh, so this is Mary's fifth at night. What do these people all have in common? Sir Isaac Newton, mathematician, uh, physicist, and astronomer. Marie Sklodowska Curie, the first woman to win a Nobel Prize in physics and chemistry. And Theodore Zeus Geisel, author of over 50 children's books. All notable figures in history and all introverts. I am both shy and introverted, and those terms are not synonymous. I'm the person who hangs out in the kitchen with the dog at a party. So you might think it's a little crazy that I'm up here doing this right now, but I really want to give all the quiet kids in my classroom and yours a voice. They have great things to say, and we have to figure out how to get that out of them. So I'd like you to picture yourself in a classroom. Close your eyes if you like. You ask a question. Whose hand shot up? Could you really clearly picture that kid? We notice the extroverts. It's hard not to. Society, including school, often favors extroverts. Susan Cain released a book entitled Introverts, no it doesn't, quiet, that's it, <laughs> the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking, uh, in which she wrote, there is a shared bias against shyness and introversion in our society. She also wrote, studies show that we tend to rank um, fast talkers as more competent, likable, and even smarter than slow ones. And it's true, introverts tend to listen more than they talk, but quiet can often translate to focus and creativity. So we need to figure out how to bring out the best, all the strengths in both the introverts and extroverts in our classrooms. So how do we do that? Sarah Vanderwerf blogged about name tents last summer, so I decided to try it. The idea is each student writes their name on one side of the paper, and on the back is a feedback form. And each day, they write something to you, and you respond to them in writing. And it becomes like a little conversation between you and each student for that first week of school. You learn some really interesting things about your students, and they learn that you care what they have to say. So, lesson number one, I'm talking too fast, clearly. <laughs> Recognize the power of writing. If you ask me a question orally, I may not be able to form fully coherent sentences because of the anxiety I'm feeling in that moment. But ask me in writing, and we're good to go. So along with feedback forms, uh, encourage students to write questions in writing on their homework if they're struggling or have questions to which you can also respond in writing. Passive forms of communication like email and social media also really help introverts find their voice. Um, finding their voice can start small, literally. Uh, I use little whiteboards in my classroom when I do estimation 180 challenges. Every student needs to write down their estimate on their whiteboard and hold it up for me to see. And for some of them, this is really, really difficult. They don't want to be wrong. It's hard to be wrong, but we need to help them become risk takers. So it's a little easier to be wrong if you're all wrong. I'm going to guess every single one of you has the wrong answer to this, but that's OK. Right? We learn from making mistakes, and it's not really about the right answer here. It's about what strategies did they use? Who had a good estimate? How did you get there? So estimation 180 is a great way to get all your students participating in class. Participation can take many forms in a classroom. In my mind, if students are engaged in the mathematical work you are doing, they are participating. Introverts will tend to prefer working in small groups over whole class activities, but everyone can benefit from some quiet, individual think time before you start sharing. So after they've had time to work through something alone, then they can start having conversations and compare results. And that shows them that everybody in their class has a voice that is appreciated. Their voice is important, there we go. Uh, um, introverts who are confident and passionate about a topic will talk a lot. Uh, and a great way to get them talking is which one doesn't belong. So the idea here is they have to come up with a reason why each one of these doesn't belong. These are incredible activities for getting everybody in your class talking and they bring out really, really rich mathematical discussions from kindergarten to grade 12 and beyond. And that brings us to lesson number five work on your wait time. 
Uh, introverts have trained for years to be silent, to wait out their peers and teachers because they know silence makes others uncomfortable. When you ask a question, how long do you wait for an answer? Introverts know they can wait you out, and when they do that, you will prompt them with a more leading question or give them the answer. Don't. You need to show them that you value their contribution and that you're really listening to what they have to say. Then validate that, because it may have been hard for them to do. Let's invite all of our students to be part of the conversation. Let's make sure that they all have a voice that's appreciated, and let's show the world everything they can do. Create a community in your classroom. Who knows, the next Newton Curie or, or Dr. Zeus may be in your classroom too.